Hey guys, what's going on? This is Always back with another part of our Java Central Training Series. So in this video, I'm going to talk about data types. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe now. And if you like this video, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And you can follow me on Twitter at AwaysMirza01 as well. So that's being said, let's get started. As with nearly all programming language, Java support the use of variable to store data in memory. There are two major classes of variables or data types in Java, known as primitives and objects. Primitive variables or data types are used to store numbers, individual characters, and boolean values. They are stored in the fastest available memory so you can get to the data as quickly as possible. Data names are for primitives are all in lowercase and that's how you can distinguish them from complex object data types which always have an initial uppercase character. Most of the simple values you might store in Java code are primitives, but one data type that absolutely not a primitive is a string. That's a complex object. All variables in Java, whether primitives or objects, must be explicitly data types when they are declared. Java is a strategically type language and that distinguishes it from dynamic languages such as JavaScript or Python. All variables must have their types declared. Here's a classic declaration. int my var is equal to 5. The first part of this data type it's saying this is an integer value. The one and once the variable is set to integer, it can't change. In JavaScript, for example, you could start off with something as a number and then you could reset its value to a string or you could change it to runtime. In Java, you can't do that and that's because the compiler looks at declaration and allocates memory for you based on the data type you declare. The next part of the declaration is the variable identifier or name. Java naming convention require that variable names or identifiers always start with the initial lowercase character and then you can choose camel case using uppercase characters in the middle of the name to distinguish certain names. In fact, certain IDs including including IntelliJ IDEA know how to read camel case. They do spell checking to make sure you don't type something very badly, but they don't know how to read variables as individual names based where you place the uppercase character. Finally, the value is placed on the right side of the assignment operator, the equal operator. The first two part of declaration are required. You could simply weigh int my var and finish the statement with a semicolon, but that would be establishing the variable but not explaining assigning its initial value. If you want to assign the initial value, you just add the equal operator and the initial literal value you are assigning. Here's the primitive data types for numbers starting with the smallest amount of memory and going to the largest amount of memory. All primitive values are assigned meaning that their range extends from negative to positive numbers. The by data type stores 8 bit of memory. Its minimum value is minus 28 and its maximum value is positive 127. You also have the short int and long integers. Each of them takes an increasing amount of memory and has an increasing range. The most common of these data types you will see is the int. It's a 32 bit value and its range goes from minus 2 million to positive 2 million. If you need to store very large integer, you can use the long data type instead. There are two data types that you can use to store fractional values, float and double. Float is a 32 bit value and double is a 64 bit value. Once again, they both support minimum and maximum values in the negative and positive range. You can look at the Java docs to see the exact values. Double values tend to be used most commonly. They give you the largest range and the highest level of precision. Each primitive has something called a helper class. That's a part of the cl that's a part of the Java runtime library. Each of these classes can be used for converting values from one primitive data type to another and do format value using very simple logic. Here are the helper classes. The primitive byte value can be helped by the byte class. Notice that the name of the class always start with an initial uppercase character and that's how you can distinguish the class name from primitive data type name. The helper class of the short is short. The helper class of for integer is integer. And here are the other long for long and float for float. 
In fact, the most common primitive data tribe, their helper classes are exactly the same name, but that's initial uppercase character. And where there is a difference in the integer, where the primitive is int and the helper class is integer. Here is an example how you might use a helper class. Each of the helper class is a member of the package called java.lang. Just like your own code, Java classes in the runtime library are organized in packages. All classes that are member of java.lang package are available to you always without you having to add any special declaration. The double class support primitive double value. Here is an example of double value. The first word is double the data tribe and the second is a variable identifier or name double value. The third part is a literal value that I'm assigning it. Notice the letter D at the end. This is saying this is a value which could be interpreted by a compiler as either a float or a double. It's actually set as a double. You will see use of these alpha characters on all the magic literals where the compiler can't figure it out its own. So now I have the value called a double value and I want to convert it to another value. So I'm declaring a byte named a byte value and then I'm using a method of double helper class called a byte value wrapped around the double value variable and it converts it to byte and if it necessary it uh, trunk truncates any fractional value similarly the double class has an int value method a float value to and to a string method the string is a special case all java classes have a method named to string which is in the charge of converting that object whether it's a numeric or boolean or a more complex object to some to some sort of string the true string method of the double helper class converts the double to a simple string value all numeric primitives have a default value and they always default to a value of zero here is some code where i'm declaring a variable named myint my int Data type is an integer or a 32 32 bit value. I don't have an assignment at the end of declaration and then I output that value as a part of string. Starting off with a string literal, the value of my int is then appending or concatenate, concatenating the int value. Because it defaults to zero, the output will look like this. The value of my int is zero and it's going to be true of all numeric primitives starting from byte going all the way through double. So that's a brief look how I declared variable with primitive data types and a little bit about primitives and their complex helper classes. So the next video is going to be about primitive variables and output their values to a console in IntelliJ IDEA. So stay tuned for that guys. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and share with your friends if anyone want to learn Java. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. And don't forget to subscribe and you can follow me on Twitter at awaysmizza01 if you have any question. Thanks for watching in and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.